Lego games, you've got to love them, and one thing we all love is the open world. Going from Lego Island that was out even before I was born to the Moss Eisley Cantina to the Bat Cape numerous of times to Hogwarts to Middle Earth to Jurassic Park, New York, Lego Worlds, Lego City Undercover, <laughs> we've had a lot. And when I mean a lot, I mean a lot, we have had over two decades worth of Lego games. So let's have a look at the worst and the best of the bunch and let's look at the top 5 worst and best open worlds slash hub worlds in LEGO games. Oh yeah, and I forgot, <laughs> cue the music. So, hello, hello, hello there guys, I am The Good Eagle and I do lots of LEGO content on my channel, so if you do like what you see, please feel free to subscribe, but it is up to you, I, I do highly recommend though. <laughs> also, if you do want to show some support, a like would be greatly appreciated. These videos take quite a bit to make, but anyway, let's actually get into it. <laughs> so, coming in at fifth worst is LEGO Movie 2, and this is a really strange one, you either love it, or hate it. Actually, thinking about it, hate is a little bit of a strong word. Let's go with, uh, not your cup of tea. <laughs> so, LEGO Movie 2 runs off the exact same engine as LEGO Worlds, and you can really see this in the open world gameplay. So, reaching into the bottom of the barrel, I'm trying to get out a few pros about the open world. I really do respect how it all is built out of LEGO, and sometimes it can be quite aesthetically pleasing, and sometimes, uh, not so much. <laughs> but saying that, there is one feature I really do love about LEGO Movie 2's open world, and that's how you can build upon it yourself using the super building instructions. You can add shops, you can add your own buildings into the open world. I really dig that. <laughs> but that is all the good. Let's look at the bad and the ugly. So for the most recent LEGO game to date before LEGO Star Wars Skywalker Saga releases, I think you know why the open world is not that great. For 2019, it's a little bit shocking. Now, I don't mean that in a bad way. There is still aspects I do enjoy about it, but it doesn't pull me back in to go and explore further. It's not like LEGO Batman 2's Gotham where you want to explore and see what's around the corner. With LEGO Movie 2, it's just there to help you progress through the story. And it does a really good job at doing that. And yeah, if you do go to pick up LEGO Movie 2, I don't really recommend it. <laughs> but if you do go to pick it up, when you're working your way through the story, it's pretty decent going through the open world world. I really don't like Bricksburg though. <laughs> It looks like a uh, looks like a downgraded Lego world. But I have to praise what they were going for, and I could really see what they were trying to achieve, but I just don't think they fully achieved it. There are a few aspects I do want them to carry over onto future Lego game open worlds, like the idea how you can build upon the open world. I really, really do dig that. And there are a few aspects I do want to see in the future, but Lego Movie 2, I don't think it quite nailed it. Or you could go as far to say everything is not awesome. Yeah, I'm back with the puns. Yep. So yeah, coming in at 5th best is actually the only hub world on the list, and that goes to LEGO Star Wars 3, The Clone Wars. Also, sorry to all you Complete Saga fans, it's uh, it's not the canteen today. Maybe tomorrow. Stay strong. <laughs> anyway, so the main reason why I'm putting LEGO Star Wars 3 as the best hub world is because it is truly amazing. Let me explain why. So LEGO Star Wars 3 The Clone Wars is one of the final few hub worlds we actually got in LEGO games, because in 2012 we got LEGO Batman 2, which did release the first open world in a LEGO game, and LEGO Star Wars 3 released in 2011, alongside two other LEGO games, LEGO Pirates of the Caribbean and LEGO Harry Potter Years 5-7. Boy, TT Games were busy in 2011, and LEGO Star Wars 3 got the best hub world. Now, you're probably sat there thinking, why didn't you put LEGO Harry Potter on? Because in LEGO Harry Potter, you can literally explore all of Hogwarts, and it really is a phenomenal hub world, but LEGO Star Wars 3 is super unique, and I really like the concept that they went for. So in LEGO Star Wars 3, when you're in the hub world, you really do feel like you're in this constant battle between the Republic and the Separatists, and it really does help the world feel lived. And I really like how diverse and unique this hub world is because you can actually explore a Venator and a Separatist Dreadnought and you can fly across to get to the different ships. You also can use and change the system so it changes the planet in the background. <laughs> it's mint. And I remember when I was younger, I literally played for hours because it was so much fun going onto the Separatist Dreadnought as a light side character and literally being bombarded by all these different Star Wars villains from the Clone Wars. 
And being someone who actually grew up watching the Clone Wars on Cartoon Network, man, God, I remember that. And watching it on Cartoon Network and stuff, I really love how they captured the Venator. It's literally how you see it in the films and same with the Separatist Dreadnought. And that's one thing TT Games always nail. They always do their research and they always capture everything to do with that IP. So yeah, that's why it's the best hub world. Like I said, sorry, complete saga fans. It's not the cantina today. Anyway, let's move on to the fourth word. But don't get me wrong though, the cantina is still absolutely fantastic, a true specimen of the 20th century. <laughs> so coming in at fourth worst, and this is again another hub world on the list, but it's on the worst side of the list, and that goes to LEGO Pirates of the Caribbean, one of my favourite LEGO games, but the hub world, it's just not that good. It's painful to say it, but it, it's true. So the hub world is literally a port, and you do get pretty fed up of it pretty quickly, because there's not that much to explore. I really do like like how you can swim across the water and go to that beach area, it's nice and vibrant and colourful, but after you've been in it for a few hours, yeah, it does get pretty stale pretty quickly. Now looking at it in terms of a different perspective, when I was younger and I used to play Lego Pirates of the Caribbean on the Wii, yes the Wii, I really did get amused by the hub world, I used to just start fights on the pier and it was just obviously great for when I was younger, but looking back on it now when I've gone to get footage for Pirates of the Caribbean, the hub world, like I said, it goes pretty stale. But can you just imagine if we got a remake of Lego Pirates of the Caribbean sailing across the Lego Seas in a Lego pirate ship? Oh my, make it happen. But as I was saying earlier, I really wish they went with the same concept as Lego Star Wars Free the Clone Wars. Just imagine if there were two pirate ships and you're in a constant battle in the hub world and you could explore both the pirate ships. They should have gone with the same concept. But anyway, let's move on to the fourth bet. So at fourth best is Lego City Undercover, and it really is impressive in terms of the open world. So in LEGO City Undercover, it's its own unique city, and that's why I really, really enjoy it. It's not based off a city that we already know, such as New York from the LEGO Marvel games, it's its own unique city, and it simply is just called LEGO City, and it has its own different districts, which are based on different cities from all around the world. So for example, you've got a Miami looking area, Little Italy, Albatross Island, which is literally Alcatraz. You've also got like a Times Square looking area from New York. York and all the billboards, they all have unique advertisements on it and it really does help the world yet again feel lived in. And one thing that is missing in the most recent LEGO games is stuff to interact with within the open world. And guess what? LEGO City Undercover did that. You can actually interact in the open world on the fairground rides and attractions. You can also just simply pick up and eat stuff off market stalls, though you don't pay for it. But you know what I mean? You can interact in the world. And when you're driving around, it does feel like a LEGO GTA, and it's great, it really is. And I was there trying to think of a few cons, but literally I could not think of any. You can take the train as fast travel, you can also take helicopters around in the air. It's kind of annoying how you have to fly to helipads, you can't just jump out, but makes it a little bit more realistic. <laughs> That's probably the only con, but never mind. It's great. So coming in at third worst on our list is LEGO Indiana Jones 2. Let me explain. So LEGO Indiana Jones 2 is a prime example of quality over quantity. LEGO Indy 2 has around 6 hub worlds to explore, but they're just not that good. So for the year 2009 when LEGO Indiana Jones 2 actually dropped, I can really see what they were going for, because this was the year that they introduced hub world levels within a LEGO game. Before you go to your main level, you actually do a level within the hub world, and you can see how the actual hub worlds have been designed around this theme. So once you have completed the story in LEGO Indiana Jones 2, that is when the hub worlds really do fall flat. When you're going to unlock the characters and just exploring the hub worlds, you really see how flat they are, and there's nothing much to them. I can see what the scope they were going for. They wanted to introduce more hub worlds into the LEGO games to make them bigger, but it just seems they had too much quantity, and it wasn't quality. Like, compare it to the LEGO Batman 1 Batcave and Asylum. That is quality. And then LEGO Indiana Jones 2, yes, you've got more space to explore but it's not as good. But if there were a few cons to LEGO Indiana Jones 2, there actually is online multiplayer in LEGO Indy 2, so it's a real blast exploring it with your mates online. That's why I love LEGO Indy 2 so much. Anyway, let's move on to the 
third best. So at third best is LEGO DC Super Villains Open World and oh my, it's sick. Now I nearly put LEGO Batman 2 on this position mainly because of nostalgia but I didn't want that to affect it and LEGO DC Super Villains has nailed Gotham. Alongside that you get to explore Metropolis, Smallville, Apocalypse, there's a lot to explore. So Gotham City and LEGO DC Super Villains, ooh, ooh, <laughs> it's great, you've got all the neon lighting, you've got the rain on your screen, they captured it, they've got that Tim Burton-esque look to Gotham, I really dig it, along with Metropolis, it's all different, and like I said, compared to the LEGO Marvel games, instead of just being based off New York, LEGO DC Super Villains, Gotham and Metropolis are very unique, along with Apocalypse 2. And I think one of the main things they did really well in DC Super Villains was how the transition works between going from Metropolis to Gotham City. It's a really well-rounded transition. Unlike Lego Marvel 2 in Chronopolis, it did feel quite clunky, but in DC Superlands, they nailed what they were trying to achieve. And in LEGO DC Supervillains, they really do make you explore this open world. To get lots of characters, you actually have to enter interiors, do lots of puzzles, you have to explore around, look for briefcases to find certain characters. And alongside that, you can also get a police chasing DC Supervillains. I weren't lying, it's sick. <laughs> and seriously, if you have not played it, that's on you, you're missing out. Now on to the second worst, and you lot probably expected this one to be on here if you've played quite a lot of LEGO games, and that is LEGO Batman 3. <laughs> way beyond Gotham. So, different, yeah, it's a good word for this one, it is different. So it is really diverse in terms of being different, like I said on LEGO Batman 3, you get to explore lots of different Lantern Corps planets, however, I really don't like how the camera works when you're exploring the planets, I just don't like how it feels and it just doesn't feel right. And especially coming off LEGO Batman 2 in 2012, LEGO Batman 3 released in 2014, we expected we were going to get something massive. I would have been happy with Gotham again, but we got what we got. I understand they wanted to do a different style in LEGO Batman 3, and I praise them for that. It was unique, but it didn't seem to work for me, and I don't think it worked for them, because they have never done that style again. Oh, but don't get me wrong, LEGO Batman 3 is not a bad game at all. I really liked what they did with all the bat suits, and Joker had his own unique suits. I really enjoyed that, along with 1966 Batman Adam West. Ooh, the level 2 were fantastic. And surely it's not just me, but I spent most of my time on the Green Lantern planet Owa because it was normal. <laughs> anyway, coming in at second best is from LEGO Hobbit and LEGO Lord of the Rings. I'm going to put them both together because it's basically LEGO Middle Earth. So if you know The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings, the first film of the trilogy mainly is the one where they begin their journey, and when you're playing through these films in both of these games, oh my, it really is great, because you do get to explore the open world, and it really does open up. In LEGO Lord of the Rings, you play through the Fellowship of the Ring, and when you're going through the mountains and just progressing through the story, it's fantastic. Same goes to apply to Hobbit, when you go on your unexpected journey. And I especially love it in LEGO Lord of the Rings when you're Frodo and Sam and you know you got to get to Mount Doom. Don't say it, they couldn't have took the eagles to Mount Doom. <laughs> but the open world is not just great in terms of progressing your way through the story. Once you actually have finished the story in both games, the open world, it truly is amazing. You can really see at TT Games they really wanted to craft and construct Middle Earth in the best way they possibly could. And guess what? they achieved it. And I really like how you can take it all in, you can literally just get on horseback and travel and traverse your way through Middle Earth, and in LEGO Hobbit you can also go to a campfire and change the time of day, so you can explore it in the day or at night, and at night that's when more orcs appear. Now if I had to pick between Middle Earth in LEGO Hobbit and Lord of the Rings, I would go with LEGO Hobbit because it is a more updated version of Middle Earth because LEGO Hobbit is a more recent LEGO game, but in terms of an actual game, I would go with LEGO Lord of the Rings because one, I prefer Lord of the Rings, and I do think Lord of the Rings has better level design. But nevertheless, Middle Earth in both of these games, absolutely fantastic. So coming in at first best, and there's probably no surprise here, and it has to go to LEGO Dimensions. So the absolute beauty of LEGO Dimensions, it's literally got an open world for everyone. You've got Sonic the Hedgehog, you've got Adventure Time, you've got Back to the Future, Mission Impossible, Doctor Who, Ghostbusters, and Knight Rider. Ooh. Knight Rider slaps. <laughs> So LEGO Dimensions released in 2016 and it shocked everyone when LEGO Dimensions released. They first released Wave 1 and they kept adding lots of waves, Wave 2, Wave 3, Wave 4 and so on. And it went all the way up to around 2017. We were getting E.T., The Goonies and all sorts of fun packs. 
and guess what? All the open worlds were absolutely phenomenal. All of them felt quality. It wasn't the same issue with LEGO Indy 2 where it felt like there were too much quantity and the open worlds were not that quality, but in LEGO Dimensions, that's not the case. And LEGO Dimensions is truly mad. It's literally got Knight Rider. I absolutely love the 80s, so I love the Knight Rider fun pack. You get to explore Las Vegas. This is what I mean by Dimensions. Also, the 18 pack is fantastic. Like I said, it has got something for everyone. However, though, with it being number one on the list, it does have one massive downfall, and I think you know what that is. The cost. <laughs> LEGO Dimensions is a pretty expensive game. If you want to get all the packs, you're looking at quite a bit of money. And especially now, because they did discontinue LEGO Dimensions, I wonder if they never discontinue it, where we would be with LEGO Dimensions. Would we have got the Terminator, Predator and all that? You never know, Dimensions were going pretty mad. <laughs> we could have got anything. But there is one big downfall to Dimensions, and that is the cost. Dimensions is a very, very expensive LEGO game, though it is worth your money when you do get the packs, but it is pretty expensive. Especially now, some packs can be pretty hard to get hold of. Also, please go down into the comments below and let me know what your favourite pack were in LEGO Dimensions. I'm really torn between the Doctor Who pack and the Knight Rider pack. Yes, I love Knight Rider. <laughs> so coming in at first worst, this is quite a surprising one. I was really torn between LEGO Batman 3, but I seriously think this one takes it above LEGO Batman 3 for the first worst. And that has to go to LEGO Star Wars The Force Awakens. Oh, now it really does depend on what mood I am in because I don't really know. I'm really torn on Force Awakens as a Lego game itself. Sometimes I really enjoy it. I really do like playing through the story and other times there is a lot I do not like about Force Awakens. Don't get me wrong, it's still an enjoyable Lego game, but the open world in the Force Awakens, it just does not do it for me at all. So in LEGO Souls The Force Awakens, you can choose from multiple planets to explore. You've got Dequa, Jakku, Takadana and Starkiller Base and each one just feels very barren to me. There's nothing that excites me that makes me want to explore more. And another big gripe for me, LEGO Souls The Force Awakens came out in 2016. Compare it to the open world in LEGO Hobbit that dropped in 2014. Yeah. Enough said. Now this is going to sound absolutely mad, but my favourite part of the open world in LEGO Star Wars The Force Awakens is the Millennium Falcon. That's not because I don't like the sequel planets, I quite like Takodana and Starkiller Base, but <laughs> I like the Millennium Falcon in The Force Awakens, that's my favourite bit of the open world. I wish we had the canteen. Anyway, that is just on the open world. Soon I will be releasing my top 5 best and worst LEGO games. And we'll dive into Force Awakens a little bit more there. Not to say it's a bad LEGO game though, it's still enjoyable, it's just could have been better. But anyway, thank you for watching today's video. And anyway, just before you go, if you did go to enjoy today's video, please feel free to subscribe and go to drop a like to show some support. These videos do take quite a bit to make, so if you did go to enjoy, a like would be greatly appreciated. Only if you did go to enjoy though. Anyway, if you want to check out some of my other LEGO videos, there will be a playlist there. Anyway, I'll see you all in a bit. Adios.